Hello dear, guess what, we have something great for you. Now, every Thursday, we're going to start a very new conversation and it's going to be questions and answers with Pastor Tosin. So, we're going to be bringing answers to your questions on this program. We're going to be answering biblical questions, we're going to be answering spiritual questions, those troubling questions, gray area questions that nobody has really ever given you like a clarity on those things. We are going to be doing that in this program. Today, we have a question and the question is, why do unbelief and faith coexist in a man? <laughs> Quite a funny question. Because many people don't even think so. Okay, but but um let's look at the scriptures so we understand how how is basically the question is is it possible for someone to why is it that someone can um, be doubting at the same time believing at the same time? And if somebody says he believes in God, but he also believes the things that God said will not happen. Is why is why does that happen? in the heart of a man but let's see this um, from scripture let's turn our bibles to mark chapter 9 from verse 15 or oh, i'll start from verse 14 mark chapter 9 from verse 14. now this is the story about the boy that jesus healed um when the man brought his son to the disciples and he couldn't heal his boy let's see the entire story that happened is able to understand something here i'm going to take a long read so you can get the background of the story he says and when he came to the disciples he saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them immediately when they saw him all the people were greatly amazed and running to him greeted him and he asked the scribes why are you discussing with them then one of the crowd answered and said teacher i brought you my son who was a, who has a mute spirit mute spirit means the boy is um uh, is that um, dumb, mute spirit? That means he's, he's dumb. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down. It foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So the boy, apart from being um, dumb, he also had epilepsy. So that's what the demonic spirit. Uh, the demonic spirit was both holding his speech and every part of his um, uh, region in this area. So he says. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. So the man said that he brought the disciples, he brought his son to the disciples, but the disciples could not cast the demon out. The question then is, why did the man bring the his 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 son to the disciples? Because he thought the disciples could cast the devil out of his son. But to his greatest amazement, they couldn't do it. And there's only one reason why this man could have tried this in the first place. That's because he has seen the disciples before casting out devils from people, just like Jesus did. And they were getting results, like Jesus got results. So for some reason, when it came to this case, they could not cast the devil out. Why? So when Jesus came back and the man was giving Jesus a report, verse 19 says, he answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? He says, bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately, Bible says, immediately, the spirit um, convulsed him and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming at the mouth. So that means, um, when the disciples cast out the devil, the same thing the boy did, or the same thing the boy did to Jesus. So Jesus asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, he says, have compassion on us and help us. Look at verse 23. Jesus said, to him, he said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Then look at what the man said, 24. He says, immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, he says, Lord, I believe. He says, help my own belief. So notice very carefully, the man said that he believes, but he was still doubting at the same time. So Jesus said, if you only believe, he says, all things are possible to him that believes. He says, yes, Lord, I believe. He said, but help my doubt, help my own belief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, next verse, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, he says, 
deaf and dumb spirit. So that means the boy was also deaf as well. He says, deaf and dumb spirit. So I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly. I came out of him and he became as one dead. So that many said, he is dead, he is dead, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when, so interestingly, Jesus got the results. There's the same thing that happened when the when the disciples cast out the devil, they didn't get results. The same thing Jesus did, he got results. Now the disciples were confused. They were concerned as well. So when everybody left, verse 28 now says, And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, he says, Why could we not cast it out? He says, Why couldn't we cast out this devil? Why couldn't we cast it out? As Jesus said in verse 29, he says, I said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Know this very carefully. Know this very carefully. For, for, for many years, we've always thought that he was talking about the demon that was in the child. You see, so we thought that is the demon that we needed to pray and fast to cast it out. But that's not consistent with the teaching of scripture. Jesus said that all authority is given unto you in heaven and earth. Jesus even said that he gave all authority to the disciples to cast out devils, to heal all kinds of disease, to cleanse any kind of sicknesses. So they don't need to add more prayer and more fasting to cast devils out. In fact, in, Matthew, in Mark 16, Jesus even said this. He said that these signs will follow them that believe, not them that fast and believe. They that says my name, they shall cast out devils. So one of the first signs that you know that you believe in Jesus is that you're casting out devils. That's what Jesus said. So what kind, what kind exactly who cannot come out except by prayer and fast? It is the kind of unbelief. Notice the man was believing, yet he was doubting. The same thing also happened to the disciples. When the disciples saw the boy thrown down, foaming in the mouth, gnashing his teeth, and being rigid, they became afraid. And that counterbalanced their faith. That's the reason why they didn't get results. So when they cast out the devil, the devil couldn't leave the boy because when they say, come out, and the boy started foaming, and the boy started running, they, 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 they thought, what's going on? Are we going to kill the boy? So they were moved by their senses. They were moved by what they saw. So they say, Kai, no, this thing can't work. Let's just stop it. And that was why they couldn't get the boy delivered. When Jesus came, when Jesus told the devil to come out, the Bible says that the boy fell as dead. The Bible says that, in fact, the boy started to convulse right in his front. People even thought that the boy is dead. And Jesus said, in the, and Jesus said come out, deaf and dumb spirit. He says, I'll return to him no more. So Jesus was not moved by what he saw. He was not moved by, the, by his environment. He was moved by faith. Now, there are three kinds of unbelief. The first kind of unbelief is unbelief that comes by ignorance. That means when you don't know the truth of God's word, right? It will develop unbelief in you. For instance, if you don't believe in the Holy Spirit, you will never enjoy the benefit and the beauty of knowing the person of the Holy Spirit. Also, you will not enjoy the gifts of the Spirit as well because you are ignorant of this gift. So what you don't know is very important. What you don't know is you need to know because if you don't know it, you walk in unbelief. You will never believe that those things really exist. For instance, if you have never been taught about speaking in tongues, you may never speak in tongues your whole life. Why? Because you will never even try to release your faith for justice in the first place. So that's how it works. So, but you see, this kind of unbelief can be corrected by the right knowledge. So when you submit yourself under sound doctrine, under sound teaching, then this ignorance can be solved once and for all. Now, the second kind of unbelief is unbelief that comes by wrong teaching. That means when you are taught wrongly about something. Now, wrong teaching is things like somebody says like the days of miracles are over. You know, so you can never be so the day in the miracle in your life, you can't even be believing God for a miracle because you know that they've already taught you there are no more miracles anymore. You see that so that is unbelief that is brought to you by wrong teaching. And you see that one is even worse because now you need to unlearn that and learn the right thing. So, but you see, that one can also be corrected too by the accurate teaching, the accurate um, dividing of the word of truth. That can also be corrected. Now, there's a third kind of unbelief which cannot be corrected just by the word. It is the unbelief that comes by your environment based on your five senses, what you see, what you feel, what you hear. 
You see, what you eat, these things can actually affect your faith. You see that till their own there's unbelief generated by your environment. Ajito said this kind of unbelief cannot go except by prayer and fasting. That's the purpose of fasting. That's the purpose of prayer. To put your senses in check. To ensure that your human spirit is dominant over your... So that's the reason the Bible says that this kind of unbelief cannot go except by prayer and fasting. So guess what? If you don't pray and you don't fast, what's going to happen is even though you are hearing God's word, even though God's word is going to your heart, your unbelief will also be rising as well. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Unbelief also comes by hearing but hearing the things that are contrary to God's word, hearing the voice of your environment, reading the negativity of the environment. You know, when you're watching social media and all the nonsense that is right there, all the junk that is right there, unbelief, you are developing your unbelief. So when it's time to release your faith for big things, you find it so hard to do. Why? Because unbelief has so stayed in your heart. And the reason why unbelief stays in our heart together with our faith is because we are the ones that feed it by what we see, by what we hear, by our sensory perception. And for the child of God, the Bible says you cannot walk by the senses. So you walk by faith. So you have to choose one because the two of them can coexist in your heart at the same time. Now, somebody may think, well, Pastor Eric, I don't need to walk on my own belief. What I need is more faith. If I have more faith, then I'll be able to solve the problem. Now, hear what Jesus said about that as well. Look at the book of Luke chapter 17, verse 5. So you are, not, you are not any different from disciples. But, and the apostles said to the Lord, it says, increase our faith. So one time, the disciples thought that the problem they had was a faith problem. They thought that they needed more faith. Because if they have more faith, then their unbelief will go away. So they said, Master, increase our faith. We, are, we want more faith. We want to believe more than we ever believed before. Give us something. Give us another level of faith. Look at what Jesus replied there. So the Lord said, if you have faith, as a mustard seed if you have faith as a grain of salt if you have faith as a grain of sugar if your faith is as big as a grain of rice if your faith is as big as a as a uh, whatever size of faith you've got he says you can say to this mulberry tree i'm reading luke 17 from verse 5 down verse 6 it says be pulled up by the root and be planted in the sea and it will obey you yes and which of you you see then what Jesus, Jesus tried to say that the faith that you have is enough. You don't need more faith than you already have. Because that faith is enough. Jesus said, if your faith is as a grain of mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou be cast into the sea and it shall be done unto you. He says, whatsoever you access, believe and you receive it. So what the Bible tell you? You don't need more faith. What you need is less and less unbelief. Less and less unbelief. So that the faith that you have that faith that brought to you salvation that faith that brought to you the holy spirit is also powerful enough to change the circumstances of your life is powerful enough to solve every issue every problem in your life is big enough to bring down mountains that's what jesus taught in the scripture but if you don't watch what you hear if you don't watch what you feed through your eyes through your ears into your spirit it is going to build your unbelief and that will counterbalance your faith. Even though you're a child of God, you would not be any different for the rest of the world. Why? Because faith and unbelief is coexisting in your heart at the same time. And you are the instrument of these things. Because remember, you got born again because you heard the word. When you received the word, your faith was developed in your heart. In the same way, when you don't hear the word, when you start hearing other things that is contrary to God's word, it's also going to build your unbelief. So what is the point and what well, well, we're trying to communicate here now. Shut your ears from the things that are not consistent with God's word. Shut your eyes from the things that are not consistent with God's word. That's the only way to ensure that unbelief is not growing, unbelief is not developing in your heart. Praise God. God bless you.